no government in the history of mankind has ever relinquished power voluntarily. The power that they have taken away from us over the past 20 months, they will never give back. They have taken away our freedom of speech. They have closed the churches. They have taken away jury trials against companies, no matter how negligent they are, no matter how reckless they are, no matter how grievous your injury. You cannot sue that company. They have taken away our property rights in the United States. They closed a million businesses for a year with no just compensation and no due process. They have taken away our right to be free of warrantless searches and seizures and surveillance by the government. This is a global coup d'etat against liberal democracy across the planet. And all of these rights that were taken away from us, these governments said it was temporary, it was only two weeks, it would be over. In truth, you can all see what's happening. They are taking those rights and they will never give them back unless we make them. Shalom. Kohlaimla Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Bahashim Rakal Kadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel. Throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. And double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson entitled Egypt Shall Mourn. And that Egypt is talking about this global empire. And the primary location of the new Egypt is spiritual Sodom and Egypt, pursuant to Revelations 11 and 8, is America. So this empire has a global reach through the international bankers. And the world is tired. The world is growing weary of this global totalitarian style of leadership tyranny let's go to proverbs 29 real quick i'm going to go to proverbs chapter 29 the book of proverbs chapter 29 verse 2 when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. And that's what's happening right now. Uproars of the people. The people are beginning to rise up against the 1%, against the global ruling elite. And the people are on the edge. They're tired of lockdowns. They're tired of their freedoms being taken away or restricted. Travel being limited. Restricted movement. Let's go to verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. So those that are stuck to this word are dwelling in the habitation of the righteous. The law is this Bible that is talking about the tabernacle of David. 
the new governing elite, the new head. Let's read that again. Proverbs 29, verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. So that vision goes back to sight, eyes to see, ears to hear. <clears throat> Let's look at that word vision. 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 The faculty or state of being able to see. So we have spiritual eyes to see and ears to hear through the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let's go to Proverbs 29. Verse 16, when the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth, but the righteous shall see their fall. So the wicked are the 13 Illuminati families, Edomites, the fake royal monarch. They're ruling the earth today through tyranny totalitarianism, unrighteous decrees. So Egypt shall mourn is talking about spiritual Sodom in Egypt, which is primarily America, but has a global reach. Let's go into it. Let's go to second address. 15 and 12. 2nd Ezra 15, verse 12. Let's go to verse 11. We got to go to verse 10. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt, America, and the other lands where we've been scattered. Verse 11. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. So when you're reading this chapter and the next chapter, it goes into how the land is going to be destroyed. Starting with nuclear missiles, the arrows of the Lord. Second Ezra 16, verse 13. For strong is the right hand that bendeth the bow. His arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. So these are intercontinental ballistic missiles. Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. So this is a dragon, a global empire under the elites. Let's go back to 2nd Edges 15, verse 12. Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that the Most High shall bring upon it. They that till the ground shall mourn, for their seed shall fail through the blasting and hail, and with a fearful constellation. That hell is the destruction from these missiles. Matter of fact, let's go to Isaiah. The blasting and hell. Isaiah 28. Let's 
Let's go to verse. Right here. Verse 17. Judgment also will I lay to the line and righteousness to the plummet and the hell shall sweep away the refuge of lies and the waters shall overflow the hiding place. The waters is this truth and preached throughout the world. The hell are these nuclear missiles. Let's read it again. Judgment also will I lay to the line and righteousness to the plummet and the hell shall sweep away the refuge of lies and the water shall overflow a hiding place. So the waters go out first, which marks this place for judgment. Followed by a hell of missiles, fire. Let's go back. Second Ezra 15. Let's go back to verse 13. They that till the ground shall mourn, for their seeds shall fail through the blasting and hell, and with a fearful constellation. So these missiles look like stars coming down. A constellation. Verse 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. These swords are instruments of war, modern day weapons. One people fighting against another. And we're going to read that where Yahweh Shai prophesied about this neighbor against neighbor, brother against brother, and kingdom against kingdom. Verse 15 again. Let's go back to verse 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hand. For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. So this is an uprising or insurrection against the government. Out of fact, let's go here. I looked it up earlier. Here we go. See? See? Realistic guerrilla war exercises are being conducted to train how to fight city within the city, urban environment. It's called urban warfare. And in the rural areas of the United States, they're training at Fort Bragg. That's the special operations or special warfare headquarters in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. So they're training how to fight within the cities against citizens or so-called freedom fighters. See, a realistic guerrilla war will be fought across two dozen North Carolina counties this month with young soldiers battling seasoned freedom fighters, according to the United States Army. This is unconventional warfare, fighting against citizens. So they're activating special task forces and 
the Special Operations Command is focused on urban warfare. Let's go back to that. Second Ezra 15, verse 15. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. Or because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. These are national lockdowns, police checkpoints, and military checkpoints. Military police traffic control entry and exit points. And you will, will need a pass to travel in and out of the cities, in and out of the counties, and from state to state. You will need to be marked and tracked with a pass, a travel pass. And I can't say the other word, but it starts with a C, a C pass. So this thing is heating up, and the global elites, the one percenters, are getting nervous. They study Bible prophecy, and they are listening to the men of the Lord in these last days. So they know that they are on borrowed time. Why? Because the Bible says that the plowman shall overtake the reaper. Those that are reaping all the benefits on the poor, the Israelites, the plowmen, are prophesied to overtake the reaper, the global elites, or the rich man. In the rich man, poor man parable, Judah is going to be a terror unto the land of Egypt. That's in Isaiah chapter 19. And that's mainly the two-thirds. And then eventually, the elect is going to be raised up. But that's when Yahweh Shai comes. Let's go to Isaiah 19 and 2. The book of Isaiah, chapter 19, verse 2. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight every one against his brother, and every one against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. Kingdom against kingdom is like Russia against the NATO and European Union, fighting from country to countries and their allies, and city against city, insurrections against the government authorities, against their kings, against their princes, that's mayors, governors, senators, congressmen. Let's keep going and we'll close out. Let's go to Matthew 24. Let's go to verse, let's start at the top. Not going to make this long. Let's go to verse 3. And this is Yahweh Shai prophesying. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be? the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. <laughs> so Esau, Edom is ruling in the end of the world. Pursuant to 2 Ezra 6 and 9, 
So what are the events marking the sign of the return of the Hamashiach, the son of the Most High? Verse 4, And Yahawashai answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Hamashiach, and shall deceive many. Many are saying that they are anointed, that they are prophets. Or six, and ye shall hear of wars and of rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famine and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Now, some of these earthquakes are going to be initiated by these intercontinental ballistic missiles, man-made earthquakes. I'm going to show that. For the second Ezra 16. Yep, second Ezra 16. Remember, Yahweh said what? The beginning of sorrows. Second Ezra 16 or 17. Woe is me. Woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? Ezra is reincarnated back on the earth. Verse 18. The beginning of sorrows and great mourning. The beginning of famine and great death. The beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear. The beginning of evil. What shall I do when these evils shall come? See? Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. Let's go into these earthquakes. Well, let's go to verse. There it is right here. Second Ezra 16, verse 12. The earth quaketh, and the foundations thereof, the sea ariseth up with waves from the deep, and the waves of it are troubled, and the fish thereof also before the Lord, and before the glory of his power. So his spirit is going to be directing these missiles. Let's go up to verse 11. The Lord shall threaten, and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence? So he's coming with fire. Let's read that again. The Lord shall threaten, and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence? Let's jump down to verse 13. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. His arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. Let's go to verse 15. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundation of the earth. So these missiles are going to be shot unto the ends of the world. These are the arrows of the Lord. So some of these earthquakes are man-made. Let's jump, jump back to verse 12. The earth quaketh, and the foundations thereof, the sea ariseth up with waves from the deep, and the waves of it are troubled, and the fish thereof also before the Lord, and before the glory of of his power. Let's go back to Yahweh Shai. He prophesied about this. The beginning of sorrows. Matthew 24, verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Back to verse 7. 
or nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famine and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Now we've had real earthquakes and we're also going to have earth shattering missiles strike their destinations. These missiles are literally earth shattering and they cause tsunamis and earthquakes. That's why we read that in 2nd Esther 16. The waves rise up from the deep tsunamis and the fish thereof arise up. The oceans are going to come across the landmass. And it's going to appear like a lake of fire from overhead. So this thing is heating up. Nation against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. Neighbor against neighbor. Brother against brother. This is not a game. And all the mockers and scoffers are going to eat missiles. They're going to be burned up in that lake of fire or taken by these insurrections, in-house fighting, urban warfare by Gurkha troops, special operations troops, Green Berets, military warlord or mercenary task forces. They're coming. Unconventional warfare. So the 1%, of 13 Illuminati families are getting nervous. So they're really, they're working this division and in-house fighting. That's less that they have to fight direct with their special personalized security. So they're trying to divide and conquer in order to preserve their rulership. But really, that's through the spirit of the Most High on the left-hand side that's causing this division and breakdown. We read that in Isaiah 19 and 2. I will set Egyptian against Egyptian. So the Bible says that the king's heart is in the hands of the Lord. He turneth it whithersoever he will. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, or Kakadash, or Rakatham. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. We got next, Lord willing. Come Yashmarala and abide Baba. Shalom.